box themselves. Well, who better to unpack all of this than author and researcher Dr. Stephanie Hare, a regular on this programme. Stephanie, lovely to see you. Thank you. So what do you make of these warnings from GCHQ? Well, on the one hand, I was fascinated. On the other hand, I was slightly confused. So I will try to break this down for our viewers. Um, the National Cybersecurity Center is a branch of the Signals Intelligence Agency, GCHQ, here in the United Kingdom. And they're wonderful. I urge everyone who's curious about ChatGPT and other forms of generative AI to go to their website. They've got lots of blog posts that you can read. And they're putting out two new ones today for us. So what do they tell us? They're telling us that all of these wonderful tools that people are using, ChatGPT being just one example, are in fact still very experimental which is maybe something that we needed to hear about 10 months ago when ChatGPT kind of exploded onto the popular consciousness. Because what's happening, is, of course, is if you're reading the Financial Times or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, what you're hearing is that all of the business leaders around the world are saying that they have to integrate these types of technologies into their business. Otherwise, they're afraid of missing out. But our friends at the National Cybersecurity Center warn that the training data that these tools are built on, the data could be poisoned. Somebody could literally del uh, deliberately interfere with it, which would mess up the results. That would be very bad for your customers or anyone using these tools. And the second threat is something that they call prompt injection threats, prompt attacks. And that's where somebody could basically, it's kind of like, imagine being a very naughty teenager. How would you try to break one of these tools to get it to do something that it wasn't designed to do? Now imagine somebody doing that who's a criminal, right? Or so really, this, really evil. This is the warning then about so-called bad actors using this for the wrong reasons. That's which right. actually has been there really from the get-go, hasn't there? Because there's been several high, very high-profile names such as Steve Wozniak and others who've said, hang on a second, we, we need to just, you know, put the brakes on all of this. And the debate's yeah. been going on, as you say, for some 10 months now. Yeah. So that's what's interesting is why now? And I think that might be precisely because of the uptake that we're seeing in business. Um, Accenture put out a report quite recently saying they'd done a survey with over, over 2,000 business leaders saying that they were going to be bringing this stuff into their operations. What the National Cybersecurity Center is saying is, hang on, this stuff is very difficult to detect. It's almost impossible to have a fail-safe mitigation. So if you're a CEO or if you're a general counsel of a company and you're thinking, do I bring a large language model into my business or not? You might want to pause that yeah. because what the national cybersecurity is saying is you might not be able to detect when it's going wrong and you definitely can't have a fail safe prevention. So what do you do in that case? If you're somebody who has a fiduciary responsibility, for example, to protect your business, yeah, you don't want sure. to lawsuits for that and you don't want to have fraud or harm. So, it's a slowdown from the National Cybersecurity Center. Okay. And a reminder, this is experimental technology. Absolutely. And it's always good to be reminded of that. Stephanie, thank you. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. See you again.